Hey guys, it's Daniel here from Danvers Car. Uh, today I'm showing you how to service a Toyota Land Cruiser HDJ100 with the 1HD FTE engine. So we'll do a quick oil change, oil filter, air filter, and fuel filter. So uh, stick around and have a look what we do. Okay, so first thing we should do is open up the oil filler cap. So it'll be easier to drain the oil when we open up the oil drain plug underneath the car. So this here, this is the air filter box. So we open up the, bolt, the box by undoing these clips. Should be three of them. Undo the vacuum lines. And then pull out the filter. Jiggling around a little bit. Pull it out. And then you can blow this out or you can get a new one. This one probably needs a new one because it's quite dirty. So uh, I'll go get the new one, pop it in. Before installing the new air filter, always make sure that you check inside to see if there's any contaminants like dust, leaks. So in here there's a little bit of dust, so we'll just get a cloth, we'll wipe it down and clean it up before we put anything brand new in there. So I got these cloths from an aviation business who, uh, these used to be the washcloths, what you get on the aircraft to wash your hands. And they come very handy in just cleaning dust, oil and spillages and whatever else you can get from around the garage. So if you can get your, hold, your hands on some, go ahead. But uh, if not, then you can go to old, uh, like the salvo stores and stuff like that. They, will, they usually have a, um, a throw out bin or they have a bag full of old rags which they, which they can't sell and you can get them for usually about 20 bucks or something per 10 kilograms. So it's definitely worth grabbing some of those and that way you don't have to go ruining your new clothes or whatever else you've got around the shop which you just need. Also don't leave anything in here. If you have a rag and you're using it, make sure you take it out straight away because I've seen mechanics leave cloths and rags and stuff like that inside the intake. They start the engine, then it gets sucked into the engine. That's a very expensive bill. So I thought while I'm doing this, I might just quickly show you how to clean an air filter. Uh, so get yourself an air gun and a compressor, <laughs> obviously to use one. And don't blow from the outside in because all you're gonna do is just push the dust further into the filter you want to go from the inside out. So you just start by going all the way around, slowly, slowly, and then once you do that, then go on the outside and blow it to the side. Don't push down into it, because you're just going to clog it up more. So you can see all the dust falling out. Or at least I can see it, I don't know if you guys can. But there's a lot of it. And that's still dirty on the outside. So you got most of the dust from the inside, but you can't get any of that off. So just blow it on an angle. If you're desperate, you could use that to keep going until you can go buy a brand new one. Okay, so here we have the Tudor air filter for the 1HD FTE engine. Here is the oil filter for the 1HD FTE. It's a Z334 and the fuel filter is a Z252X. 
We also have here the genuine Toyota part numbers for the oil filter and fuel filter. So if you guys want to go with genuine, then there they are. So this is the oil which I use for the 1HD FTE and the 1HZ. It's the Dello 400 made by Caltex. It's the SAE 15W40. It's the only one they make in the Dello 400 from what I'm aware of. But it's uh, definitely worth buying. You can buy them at most Caltex truck stops or even some Caltex just normal petrol stations. Okay, so you need a size 14 socket to undo the sump bolt. Make sure that you have something to catch the oil in. Also make sure that you have the oil filler cap, which is up top, opened up. And there we go. So let all the oil drain out. I recommend the engine be warm. That way it flows out a lot easier and quicker for you. So let all of it drain, clean up the sump plug. Replace the washer if you need to. Inspect for anything metal on there. And we'll let that drain out. Just make sure that you leave it in the middle. Because when the flow starts to slow down, it will move towards the front of the car. Okay, I just fit a little bit of gasket glue on there. So, it's a bit squishy under here. Make sure you clean the surface well, and then stick it on. Try getting underneath that again. Okay, thread that on. Get your 14 mil socket again. And just Tighten it up. Not too much, because you don't want to rip it out. Just tap it up. Pull your oil out without trying to spill it. This thing is very, very full. And I think I'm spilling it everywhere. Oh, great. Should have used the bigger one. Usually I do this up on the hoist so I don't have this issue with a little bucket. Okay, so now that we've dropped the oil from the sump, now it's time to take off the oil filter. So Toyota sells these sort of sockets for the oil filter. So they just pop on, just like a normal socket on a bolt or a nut, and you can undo it. Uh, if you're using Toyota, then, or Toyota Genuine Filters, then this will fit perfectly. If you're using Ryko or an aftermarket filter, then you can buy kits, filter remover kits, which will fit those ones. Uh, so you pop that on, get a 17 mil socket, an extension and a ratchet, and then just undo it like that. Also, don't forget to put in a cloth underneath the filter. So most, the mod, uh, the, all the 1HD FTEs have these little oil catches on the bottom of the filter. Some 1HZs do as well. I think it's after 2014 they were installed. They are a separate part, so if you did want to put them onto your earlier model, which doesn't have it, then they are available. So just quickly undo it. Pull it out so you don't lose too much oil. There you go, no mess. Anything did pour out, just clean it up. Make sure you clean the mating surface. Perfect. So we'll get a new filter, put a little bit of oil on the seal, on the O-ring. That way it won't get seized onto the rubber when we turn it on.
and it will be a lot easier to take off next time. Now when you're removing your old oil filter and you buy a new oil filter, make sure that you always double check the part numbers on each one so they match up before you take the plastic wrapping off. So you've got 90915-3002. So they both numbers match up. So I'll undo the plastic wrapping. I'll zoom out and show you guys what I'm doing. So we've got the plastic wrapping on there. You have to undo that. It just peels off eventually. Throw that in the bin. Then get your new oil. Dip your finger in it. It's a nice clean oil on my finger. Wipe it onto the seal. Hold it onto the O-ring. And then you can turn it on. I'll spin it on to the filter housing. So first just spin it on by hand. Hand tight. And give it a bit of a nip. With your tool. And that's it. That's all it needs. Sometimes the tool gets stuck, so you just gotta give it a little bit of a twist in the opposite direction. It's quite easy to pull off. Okay, so there's a few tips and tricks what I have with removing the fuel filter. So sometimes when the filter itself is really seized on, I undo these nuts, turn this upside down, and then I use my uh, tool, or pliers or whatever we have, like multi-grips, to grip onto the filter and spin it around. So first I'll try it by hand, but before you do that, you have to remove the plug. Then try it. By hand, no, no good, so I have to go get the tool. Okay, so here's the filter remover tool. So thread the sensor cable and the drain plug. Put it around the filter and spin it around until it's loose. Pull it off without damaging the sensor cable. It's the last thing you want. And do it without spilling any of the diesel. Or at least try and minimize spilling any of the diesel. Okay, now just pull the excess into your bucket. If you do spill any diesel on the car, make sure you wipe it up, clean it up. So the best way I've found to um, pull the sensor off is use a pair of multi-grips. Wrap it around there, stick the filter in a vise or use your, um, your oil filter tool, and then you can spin it off. Right. Put that down. I'm gonna do this over the bucket so I don't spill any fuel anywhere if there's anything left in there. Okay, there it is. Just inspect everything, make sure it's still fine, make sure there's no damage to the cable. And usually you get new O-rings, so pull that one off, clean the area. 
jump into the new box. So here's the new filter, new O-ring. So identical O-rings, so that one can go in the bin now. There's the new one. So I, I usually get a little bit of oil as well, new engine oil. So just dump your finger in the oil and just wet the O-ring. over the bit, clean your hands, always try your best to touch the filter with clean hands, that way they're not oily, it's easy to undo and tighten up the filter. Tighten it all the way. Get your multi grip. Put it on. And give it a bit of a tight. Now thread it on. While you're threading it on, make sure you keep spinning the cable with it and untying it so it doesn't get stuck. Or another way is just to pull it off or have it fall off like it just happened to me. Do it up hand tight. And then just give it a little bit of a nip to tighten it up. And that's it. Double check, make sure the cable's not all twisted. Plug in the sensor. Put it in its little home on the side. So that's just your little drain plug. You've got a little hole here where it lives in. So you stick it in the hole. Stick it in the drain valve. And there you go. If you ever need to drain any water out of your fuel, that's where it goes, instead of going all over the wheel arch inside, it goes <laughs> onto your tyre. So now that we've done that, now you've got to pump the diesel in. So you just keep pumping until the pressure builds inside. You can feel it now, it's getting harder and harder to pump. So just keep pumping, keep pumping. I just keep pumping until it gets too hard to pump anymore. We feel a lot of resistance. All right, we're getting there now. And that's it, it's plenty. Let's wipe down your work area again. Make sure that clip doesn't fall off. Okay, now filter's on, oil filter, fuel filter, drain plug is done up. Now we'll put some oil into the car. Okay, so make sure when you get your, your oil funnel, or your funnel, make sure you clean it really well, so you don't want any foreign contaminants getting inside. Clean it all the way. Stick it in. And before you start pouring oil, pull out your dipstick. Pull that out, clean it up. And just put it in there so it's just sitting. That way you can pour some oil in. And then check how much oil is actually in there. So the only problem I have with this Delo 400 because it's quite a large tin, it's 20 liters of oil, it's hard to 
pour into the engine bay without getting it everywhere. So a nice little trick is to get your old oil container, like a little five liter one or your liter ones or whatever, and use that to pour the oil in at first. And that makes life a lot easier. Oh, I have a whole bunch of these mixing containers. So since I don't have anything bigger, I'll just use, I'll just pour a bit of oil each time. Do I get enough out of this 20 liter tin? Look at that beautiful oil. Yum, yum. So that's 500 mil. It's one liter now. One and a half. Two liters. Two and a half. It's three. See if you lost count, you don't remember, or you don't use the smaller container, or you just use the big drum of oil, and you don't remember how much you put in. Simple way, dip the dipstick in, wait a few seconds, pull it out, inspect the dipstick. This one's still dry, that means we were nowhere close to the amount of oil we need. Again, just put it in so it's just sitting there. Pour a little filling container out. Now that we've got enough oil out of the tin, it's very easy to lift up. Pour. All right, now we'll have a look. Again, which we poured in. Give it a few seconds or a minute for it to settle down to the bottom. Wait a few seconds, pull it out, have a look. It's just touching the dipstick now, so it's just below the first mark. That means we need some more oil. Again, just put it in there so it's just sitting. Pour some more in. All right. Push the dipstick in. Wait a few seconds. Pull it out inspect the dipstick. It's saying we're about three quarters of the way in. So we need a little bit more. Don't forget also that when we start the engine, it's still got to put oil into the oil filter as well. Put a little bit more in. Wait for that to settle down. Check under the car, see if you've got any leaks. No leaks. Means we're done. Oh, we tighten up the, the sump plug, nice and tight. All right, push in the dipstick. Again, wait a few seconds. Pull it out, inspect. We are right on the dot. So I'll put a little bit more in because I know the oil filter will take up a little bit of oil since we're just below the dot. I'll just put in a splash. There we go. Inspect the dipstick. Make sure we have above a dot now. So when we can start the engine, 
it will come down into exactly a dot. Once we do start the engine, let it idle. Make sure that you watch the oil pressure gauge that it actually comes up. If it doesn't come up, then within 10 seconds, turn off the engine and inspect. Have a look under the engine, see if there's any oil coming out. Look around the oil filter, make sure there's no oil coming out of it as well. Then if that looks all fine, go back to, the, to your driver's seat and start the engine again and inspect. Let it idle for 10, 15 seconds. If the oil pressure still isn't coming up, then you have to do some more investigation. All right, now that we waited for it to drop, dip the dipstick in, wait a few seconds, pull it out. All right, and we are the, just a touch above the top line, which is perfect. So now, put all that in. Close your breather. Make sure that's tight. Now we've primed the fuel pump, filter spun on. The sump plug is in. Pull everything out of the engine bay. Make sure the area is all clear. It's all fine there. These belts are still nice and tight. Viscous hub feels good. The other two belts, yep, they're good. Respect to your coolant, it's on the full line. I won't open this up because the engine's still quite warm. Batteries are connected. Power steering is good. And it's all clear. Quickly throw in air filter. I didn't actually grab a new air filter because I forgot. So I'll go to, to Toyota tomorrow and grab one. So for now, I, since I cleaned this one out, it's still good to go. So installing the air filter, make sure you center it, put all your clips on, put all your vacuum hoses back on as well. So on the bottom, on the outlet, torch out of the way, start the car up. Make sure it's in neutral, handbrake on. Oil pressure is coming up, perfect. Now look under the engine, make sure there's no oil leak. No oil is dripping out. Inspect your oil filter. No oil coming out. Fuel filter, no fuel coming out. Airbox is nice and tight. No noise from any of the pulleys. Nice sound from the engine. Now we'll just let it idle for idle till it warms up. And that is how you change oil in a 1HD FTE. So as you can see, oil pressure is reading good. Temperature's starting to come up. Battery voltage is good. Everything is good. So now what I do is I set A as my service interval. So when that hits 5,000, 10,000, whatever you adjust it to, then you know that that's when your service is due. So as always, after a service, we have to go take it for a test drive now. So let's buckle in, have some fun. Whoop.
Don't forget your seatbelt. After a quick little drive, get the torch. Inspect under the car, make sure there's no oil leaks. No leaks. All dry. Have a look under the engine bay. Oh, in the engine bay. Looks good. No leak from the oil filter and the fuel filter. Perfect. Successful oil change.